Hey you guys, how are you doing? First of all, I want to apologize for the lighting. My lighting in this office isn't very good. I do have like all my studio lights and things there. But since I'm just filming this day with me and I want to be like at my main work desk, like I have a wall here, like I have no lighting, no windows, nothing. So th this is pretty much just about the best setup I can get unless I'm on the floor for a study with me. But I didn't want to be on the floor today because I wanted to show you guys my new chair. I love this chair I got off Amazon. I had to wait quite a while for it because of course supply issues and things like that, but it was well worth the wait. It's pink, it's white, it's super, super comfy, and it has fixed my lower back problem. And you guys look at my shoulder, it's not all swollen. It's not fully better yet, but it's like eight million times better than it was. So it's helping so, so, so much. Totally worth it. Also, I'm actually going to be studying on my iPad today. I'm a huge tech geek, I love tech stuff. I have not bought a new iPad since, um, well, this is the last generation of iPad that I bought. I'm not even sure what generation iPad this is. I think it's Gen 2, I'm not sure, it's very heavy. Like, I could knock somebody out with this. Um, it's in a really old ratty case, but it's like back when the iPads were like super, super thick. I mean, super thick for an iPad, but you know what I mean. Um, this thing is basically brick now. It is good for Safari and for watching like YouTube videos and movies, and that's about it. I can't even update the majority of the apps on here because I can't update the OS on this anymore. Will I ever get rid of it? Probably not, because I kind of tend to hoard old dead Apple products. It's it's a thing. But I got the brand new, like brand brand new. I didn't even know they released new iPads in March. Did you know they released new iPads in March? How did I not know this? Probably because, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic. But they released, updated, they did like very, very minor updates to the iPad that they released in 2018 in March. So this is like the brand new fourth gen iPad. No, I do not have a case on it. I am living dangerously. I got the 12.9 inch in slate gray because it's the only one they had in this state. We had to drive an hour and a half away from where we live to go and pick this up because like no one in the state had iPads. Has the new shiny cameras, these are so much better than the ones on my iPhone 8. I desperately want an iPhone 11 Pro now because the camera on this is amazing, though who's ever actually going to take photos with your iPad, scanning stuff, totally. Uh, photos? Not really. I love it. I also got the Apple Pencil too, which I love. It's amazing. Obviously, it's the second one. It's magnetic. And of course, I have BTS as my background. My husband fully understands that they have a very important place in my life and they are my background and my screensaver on everything. Like, literally everything. Anyway, <laughs> um, I got this because A, I've been needing a new iPad forever, B, I desperately have won for a very, very long time two apps, Procreate and GoodNotes 5, and I got both of them. Oh my gosh, they are so worth the money. Procreate is amazing. It is so good. It's like Photoshop and Illustrator had a magical baby that's really easy to draw with. It's... It's incredible. If you have any, any background in art at all, I would highly recommend getting that app because it's so good. And then GoodNotes is incredible. I love it. Um, I know there's another app, Notability. I've tried using Notability before and I downloaded it on here and tried it. I still don't like it. I still don't think it's as good as GoodNotes is. I just don't like the organizational system as much. Also, please forgive the mowing. For some reason, every time I sit down to film someone, 
decides to mow their yard. Yay. But I have a bunch of other stuff on here. If you guys would like for me to do a full video on my iPad, what I put on here, what I like to use, etc., I will happily let you know. I've only had this thing for about a week and a half so far, and I love it so much. Um, I don't have a case, but when I'm at my desk, I keep it on this. This is by a brand called Aranex, I think. It's a little stand and it's metal and this thing is like crazy sturdy. I bought this way back at like right before, when was it? It was, before, it was Black Friday. It was the only thing I bought on Black Friday because I thought, oh, I can use it to hold my phone and if I ever get a new iPad, I can use it for that. This is so sturdy. It holds this iPad like no problem and it's got like little bumpers and stuff. I love it and of course it looks like the other Mac stuff I have on my desk. So that is amazing. But anyway, I am pretty much in the process of transitioning all my studying over to the iPad and GoodNotes because it is so much easier to study and organize notes. Before, I had like four or five different notebooks for Korean, which one is wasteful, not that good for the environment. Also, the way I study. I study by recopying notes. It's the way my brain works. It's the way I've always studied it ever since I was in middle school. I just sit there and I recopy notes over and over again. Doing that on paper with pens, A, I have an absurd pen collection. It's horrifying just like that mower and I was going through a ton of paper and also if I wanted to go somewhere and study it was really difficult like I couldn't really study in bed anything like that because I'd have to have a notebook sometimes prop the notebook on pens erasers whiteout oh my gosh the whiteout when you are learning a language especially that has a different alphabet than alphabet or character set depending on what you use. Korean has a phonetic alphabet so I just call it that. But um, you have to like erase things or white out things constantly because like the littlest difference in where a line goes is the difference between two different letters. So when you're not used to that, it when you haven't been writing in it for goodness knows how many years, it takes a while to get used to it. So I still screw up spelling in Korean all the time, constantly, always. But on here, it's really easy. I just double tap the pen, erase it, and off I go. If you want me to do a whole video on exactly how I use GoodNotes, I can do that too. I know everybody and their mother has had this for way longer than I have and has made a video on it. But one of my favorite things about this, I have to show you my notes from my last lesson I did right now. I am doing review stuff. Um, yes, that is Jimin, and yes, you can drag and drop images from like a Google Images search straight into your notes, which um, may be the best thing ever because I just think, hmm, Let's drag and drop Jimin's face into my notes to improve my mood. I, I mean, I mean, how how can Jimin not improve your mood? <laughs> anyway, excuse me while I'm slightly obsessive. I've actually had people ask me before, like in a store, if they notice I have something BTS on, oh, who's your bias? And I'm like, well, there's seven days in a week and there's enough room for everybody. See, seven days, seven members of BTS. I have a bias for each different day of the week. Anyway, so right now, because I'm reviewing, I have a Talk To Me In Korean Level 1 notebook, and I'm going back through all the different lessons and redoing my notes, again, to review because I am not retaining things the way I should and I'm forgetting basic things. So I'm going back, I'm reviewing everything, and I also have another notebook that I just started 
called um, Talk to Me in Korean Courses because I signed up for the premium membership. I think it's like $12 a month roughly and you get access to all of their online like video and audio courses. It's a subscription service versus having to buy each individual course which is really really nice. So I'm also going through all of those courses slowly obviously and just starting the first one but I'm going to go through all of those courses and really start working on things like vocabulary and things like that but to get myself started back into studying again I'm re going through all the lessons also so I have the ones that I have difficulty with in a digital notebook if that makes sense so anyway i'm rambling like a ton this is all like important information though um i think today i haven't decided what i'm going to work on today um i was on lesson 20 native korean numbers i if i have a nemesis it is korean numbers they're really, really difficult for me. Um, so it's something I need to practice a lot more so I can get better at it. However, it's hard. I did want to point to you real quick. One of the things I love about this is I can swipe up the um, double-sided is amazing. I can drag a screen over here and literally have my lesson right here and then I can shrink it down. I can go through each lesson and take notes on it really, really easy. So I can study in bed, I can study if we're driving the car somewhere. It's really, really nice. So let's see. Oh, the other thing I wanna mention is if you get the premium membership on Talk To Me In Korean, they also give you a sample dialogue and a review quiz for every single lesson. So you can actually see that you're retaining what you're learning, which is super, super helpful. I really, really like that. However, today I think I'm actually going to skip lesson 20 and go straight to 21, which is negative sentences. So we're going to work on lesson 21, negative sentences. And I just wanted to point out, like, when you're going to add a page in GoodNotes, you can add a page before or after the page you're on. So say I jump to lesson 21 and then I go back to lesson 20 and realize, uh oh, I need more pages. All I have to do is literally add another page. It's so easy. You really can't do that in a regular notebook. There's so many things you can do now in a digital notebook. That is amazing and I've tried having a digital notebook before. Way back when I first got that first iPad, I got a stylus called the Donut Jot Pro, and I know a lot of people recommend those, but it had a flat disc on the tip of it, and it was the most annoying thing to write with. It didn't feel like a real pen at all. This feels like a real pen. Like it feels like writing with a real pen or a real pencil. And even when you're working in like Procreate and you're working with like watercolor or acrylic, like it actually behaves like that medium. It's really, really cool. Anyway, I am going to move the camera around now so you guys can see what I'm working on and start lesson 21.
Okay guys, so apparently my camera died out while I was filming. Um, I'm going to film a little bit more in just a minute. I just wanted to show you guys what my notes look like so far. So this is my entire first page of notes. I just have the lesson here and all my notes right here. I take a lot of time writing my notes because I'm working on pronunciation and really getting everything in my head as I'm writing. I just wanted to show you guys real quick what I do at the end of a page. This doesn't have like never ending pages. You just go to the next page. So I do the exact same thing that I did in my standard notebooks where I just draw like a cute little arrow. Okay, that's not very cute. But usually I just do something like cute like that, draw a cute little arrow, that's much better. And then I will write over or next so that I know that that lesson is not done and continues on to the next page. Oh, you guys want to know something really cool too that you can do? Say you're tired of taking notes, your hand's cramping, but you have like a section of text that you need to like have in your notes. Copy. So select it, copy it. Then I just press on here, click paste and it will paste it. It always pastes it in black, so I go select all, and then you can change the color. And then I just pop the keyboard down, and then I'll just grab it with tool, resize it, and you can just do, you can shrink it that way, or if you go into text, you can also shrink it. I know you can adjust the text size as well. I just can't remember how to do it. This is nice if you just want to add in a little bit of non-handwritten text. 
You probably can't see what I'm doing very well either. Yikes. Okay, but anyway, there, there's that. That's how to do it. Yep. All right, you guys, minus this little cord, which is trying to be very friendly. Here are my finished notes for level one lesson 21. There is one and two. I like writing with this nice gridded paper. It keeps my crazy messy handwriting somewhat neat and organized. And of course you can even like change the paper, which is really, really cool. Like I can change that just so like it's blank or it's white or anything like that. So if you want to use the highlighting though, I highly recommend using white paper because the highlighting doesn't show up at all on the black paper. But it does mean I can write in a whole bunch of bright colors like gel pens on black paper, which is like my favorite thing ever. And there are my finished notes. I'm pretty familiar with negative sentences and it's fairly easy. But again, it's one of those things when you go, how do I do that? How do I say that again? You completely forget. So I probably spent about 40 minutes staying this lesson. I know that's a really, really long time, but it only took so long because again, I was filming normally. I can stay pretty fast, but with trying different camera angles, things like that, it always takes longer. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this study with me. Um, if you did, go ahead and let me know down in the comments down below. If you want more stay with me videos, let me know what do you like. Do you like it when I talk and explain what I'm doing or do you just like videos with music or do you like videos like this where it was kind of a combo with talking and then just some music in the background while I study? Let me know because I love filming these. They're probably one of my favorite things to film it next to like get ready with me. Is. So, uh, yeah, let me know. I know it's kind of difficult because I don't study as consistently as I want to. Thankfully, I'm adjusting some things, so it is more po it's more possible for me to study more consistently than it used to be, and the iPad is also making a huge difference with that. And I know it's kind of hard to follow what I'm doing because I'm bouncing around and reviewing so much, but again, once I get through reviewing level one and level two again and really have it solidly in my head, then I'll feel like I'll be able to start level three again and actually be learning something and absorbing it rather than just kind of learning it as I'm going over it and then instantly brain dumping it because I can't actually connect it to things I learned before and making sentences and things like that. And that's another thing that's excellent about having a digital notebook set up is I can add in another notebook or I can add in extra pages or things like that just for doing things like practice sentences because Building sentences in Korean is really difficult because there are so many ways to write one sentence. Yeah, it's, it's my brain, which is coming from English and then learning French. Sentence structure and particles in Korean is very much like masculine and feminine pronouns are in French. It's like, you just have to remember it and know when to use it. And it's like, but I can't remember which one to use, like, ever. So hopefully, hopefully we'll get there with more studying. But anyway, if you guys like this unusually long video, I'm going to try and cut it down quite a bit. Um, go ahead and let me know. Say hi in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. And give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what are you waiting for? Just go ahead and subscribe. I promise 
I, I, I post and not like super, super frequently. I am not one of those people who posts a video every day. I wish I was that cool. I'm not even close to that awesome. So go ahead and subscribe. I hope that you are enjoying my videos. If you are, you can also keep up with me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I'm pretty much everywhere. I am primarily on Twitter and Instagram though. Facebook is just kind of there because it is. I mean, I never ever update it. So yeah, pretty much Instagram and Twitter. All the links for those are down below. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you again very, very soon. Bye.